Video games have become a huge market of entertainment in the past 20 some years. When people think of video games, the games themselves range from 8 bit side scrollers in the arcade to something a bit more realistic and a bit more violent. From Pong to games like Call of Duty, where everything is war, the video game industry has developed some stigmas or stereotypes that video games are for boys and they are nothing more than shooters and violence and completely unsubstantial. And all of that can't be farther from the truth. There are hundreds of games out there on the market with ever-evolving graphics, plot lines, characters, and platforms. Video games have started to come into their own, and there are people out there that want that known. So, they make them a work of art. The reason I'm up here trying to convince you all that video games are art is because I think that once we recognize games as an artistic medium, then we have to recognize that they have an impact on us. Kelly Santiago joined the video game industry with her mind open to what video games could really be. They could be art. They could get someone, anyone, to feel a sort of connection to the game. They weren't the standard shooter with a white male protagonist running through the same mechanics of a game we already knew. The game she wanted to put out there connected on an emotional level. And when it comes to games, our, our emotions uh, don't change. The same kind of games we played when we were children just don't work for us anymore. And now we have a generation of gamers who are grown-ups themselves and are starting to, to wonder if there isn't something more to games. Could our games be more serious? Could they reach higher levels of joy to ecstasy? Could they reach deeper levels of sadness to catharsis? And we're seeing now these games as explorations into other parts of the emotional spectrum, and then these games are being rewarded by audiences in high sales figures and critical acclaim. Santiago graduated from the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts with an MFA in Interactive Media. She teamed up with Genova Chen to create a game called Cloud. This helped launch their company, that gaming company, and their first commercially released game, Flow. Flower soon followed. And each game built on the idea that video games can be art that they are, in fact, art. Our first release, Flow, was also top selling, and now is being topped by Flower, which has also become one of the highest rated games on PlayStation Network by critics. And we can see that, so that it's not just these, these represent an evolution of of the medium as far as content, but also an evolution in what audiences are asking for and what they're looking for in a game. In 2012, that gaming company released Journey, a game where the player wakes up in the desert unaware of who they are or their real purpose. All they know is that they need to get to the mountaintop. Kelly Santiago and her team created a game that thrived on the quiet atmosphere. The only communications was with the little trills and chimes of the main character. The game played out on the act of self-discovery and projected the player into a world of grandiose visuals and haunting music. Journey fed on the emotions of the player. Journey has gone on to win countless awards including Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media, Best Download Game, and Game of the Year. These awards show that there can be room for art in the video game world, and that not every game is cookie cutter. This is a medium that can be explored, and made amazing. 
Santiago has since left that gaming company and joined IndieFund, a program to help support indie game developers keep growing. But that hasn't changed her vision of putting games out there that are art. She's just helping others do it too. <laughs>